Hello, have you ever knit one of my Brio shawls and it has you pick up stitches along the edge and then along the cast on edge and then you have this like blob of stitches on your needles and you're like, Steven, what are you trying to make me do? Well, it's called the Brioche Tab Cast On and it happens during the flying foxtail shawl at the top center of this shawl design. And it also occurs in Seriously Holy. Look at this big brioche beauty. So I use this same brioche tab cast on in a lot of my different shawl designs. Excuse me shawl that I'm wearing also has this cast on. So let's dive in and learn how to do this magical beginning. Here's the brioche tab cast on at the top center of the flying foxtail shawl. This same technique is right here in the Seriously Holy shawl. As you follow this tutorial, look at the pattern that you have as you knit, because sometimes I use different stitch counts on different designs, but for these two designs, they begin with nine stitches. So grab a main color and a contrast color, and let's get started. I'm going to show continental knitting first, holding the yarn in your left hand. If you hold the yarn in your right hand for English style throwing, you can skip ahead in the video to watch English style. Using the main color, cast on nine stitches. You can also use any cast on method you like. And if the pattern says to cast on more or fewer stitches, then follow the pattern and do exactly the stitch count and row repeats it says. But for the purposes of this video, we're going to cast on nine stitches and then slide the stitches to the other needle tip. Once you slide your main color stitches to the other needle tip, your main color will be hanging to the left. Grab your contrast color for setup row one. Slip one stitch, purl one, slip one yarn over three times. Purl one, slip one yarn over. Purl one, slip one with a yarn over. Purl one, slip one yarn over. Purl one, slip one with the yarn in front. Set up row two, wrong side. Turn your work to use the main color. Knit one, slip one with a yarn over. Brioche purl one, slip one yarn over three times. Brioche purl, slip with a yarn over. Brioche purl, slip with a yarn over. Brioche purl, slip one with a yarn over, and then slip one with yarn in front. You just worked with the main color, so now slide the stitches to work the same side with contrast color. Set up row two, wrong side. Using contrast color, slip one. Brioche knit, slip one yarn over three times. Brioche knit, slip one yarn over. Brioche knit, slip one with a yarn over. Brioche knit, slip one with a yarn over. And brioche knit, Slip that last stitch with yarn in back. Turn to work set up row three, right side. Set up row three, using main color, knit one. Slip one with a yarn over. Brioche knit one, slip one yarn over three times. Brioche knit, slip. Brioche knit, slip. Brioche knit. I always take my needle behind the yarn as I slip. Slip one with a yarn over. And let's slip that last stitch with yarn in front. So whenever I do that, you just did a slip one yarn over. After you do that slip one yarn over, bring the yarn forward. So you slip that last stitch with yarn in front. Slide the stitches. Set up row three, right side, using contrast color. Slip one, 
brioche pearl one, slip one yarn over. We're going to do that three times. Brioche pearl, slip one yarn over, brioche pearl, slip one yarn over, and brioche pearl one, slip one with the yarn in front. Look at that. We're already starting to get these nice crisp columns. Turn to work set up row four, wrong side, using main color. Knit one, slip one with a yarn over, brioche pearl one, slip one yarn over three times. Slip that last stitch with yarn in front. Don't turn because we need to slide the stitches to work the contrast color. Set up row four, wrong side. Slip one, brioche knit, slip one yarn over three times. Knit, slip, knit, slip, brioche knit, and slip that last stitch, leaving the yarn in back. Now for the flying foxtail shawl, it says to repeat rows three and four twice more. So follow your pattern. I'm going to keep showing you in this video the flying foxtail brioche tab, but if you have a different stitch count or if the pattern says to repeat those rows longer or for fewer times, do what it says in the pattern but I'm going to keep repeating rows three and four twice more for the flying foxtail shawl using main color on the right side. Always slip that last stitch with yarn in front with the main color. Slide the stitches to work the contrast color. Slip one, brioche pearl one, slip one yarn over, brioche pearl, slip, brioche pearl, slip, brioche pearl one, and slip that last stitch with yarn in front. Repeating set up row four, wrong side. Using the main color, knit one, slip one with the yarn over, brioche pearl one, slip one yarn over three times. Slip that last stitch with yarn in front, slide the stitches to work set up row four with contrast color. Set up row four using contrast color. Slip one, brioche knit one, slip one yarn over. Brioche knit, slip one yarn over. Knit, slip, knit, and that last stitch. Leave the yarn in back and slip that stitch. So for my pattern, I need to repeat rows three and four one more time. So I need to do both colors on the right side and both colors again on the wrong side. I just finished repeating my setup rows and I have this little brioche rectangle. This is going to become the top center of the flying foxtail shawl right here. So for the flying foxtail shawl, I'm ready for row one, right side. We're going to work with the main color, knit one, slip one, yarn over, brioche knit one, slip one, yarn over, three times. I'm going to place a stitch marker for this pattern 
and then knit one. Don't turn the work. We're going to rotate the rectangle to look at this main color selvage. Using the main color, pick up and knit five stitches along this selvage. Go into the first stitch, one, two, three, four, and five. Now that's just for the flying foxtail shawl. If you're using this technique for another shawl pattern, sometimes it might say to pick up and knit three stitches or to knit seven stitches. So pick up the number of stitches that it says in the pattern. I just picked up five stitches along the selvage. Now pick up and knit one stitch from the corner of the cast on edge. So I'll get one more stitch here at the corner of that cast on edge and place another stitch marker. Whichever pattern you're following, you're going to pick up stitches along the cast on edge. For this sample, I'm going to pick up eight stitches along the cast on edge. This can get pretty tight. So my trick is to pull the circular needle through so we kind of have this magic loop technique. So we have the flexibility to pick up and knit eight stitches. One, two, three. Whenever you go and pick up into a knit stitch, I like diving right into the middle of a knit stitch. That's stitch number four, five, here I'm going into a knit stitch. You can dive right into the middle of it and that's going to look really nice. Seven. And for the final stitch, I'm just going to go into one leg of this main color stitch. There we go. So I just picked up and knit my eight stitches from the cast on edge. Again, that number might be different depending on what pattern you're working with, but pick up along the cast on edge. And now we need to slide all the stitches to work row one with the contrast color. Row one, right side, using the contrast color, slip one, brioche pearl one, slip one, yarn over three times. Brioche pearl, slip, brioche pearl, slip, brioche pearl one and I'm going to slip my marker again it might be different depending on your pattern but as you're working that contrast color you're going to follow the pattern all the way to the end of the row with your contrast color and just see what that feels like for you as you're following that row if it feels like the stitches are a little bit too tight on your needle you can feel free to pull that right needle through so you have a little more flexibility to work these stitches. So follow your pattern. Um, I'm just continuing to slip and purl my stitches um, along this tab, but do exactly what the pattern says, but you're gonna wanna work all the way across your row with the contrast color. As you're reaching the end of your contrast color, slip that last stitch with yarn in front, and now we can turn to work the main color. Keep following your pattern using the main color, work it all the way across on the wrong side. Once you finish with the main color, always slide your stitches to work the contrast color. And now at this point, it's starting to get a little more flexible. Your stitches should all be able to bunch up on your needle without you having to pull that loop through to make it easier. So keep following your pattern. And the most important thing is no matter how many rows you knit or how many stitches you pick up, those were the techniques to pick up stitches along the selvage and to pick up stitches along the cast on edge. If this ever looks a little funky along this cast on edge, you can always use your tail of yarn 
from the cast on to do a little bit of surgery to beautify it and make it a little bit more precise. But that's the top center beginning of the brioche tab. Right here in the center of your shawl. If you hold the yarn in your right hand, you can cast on nine stitches using the long tail cast on, or you can use any cast on method that you like. So cast on nine stitches for this video. If you're following a pattern, you might have fewer or more stitches to cast on. So when you're doing this for your real shawl, make sure you're following the pattern closely with its recommended stitch counts. Nine stitches, two, four, six, eight, nine. Once you cast on nine stitches, slide all the stitches to your other needle tip. So you can work set up row one, right side with contrast color. Using contrast color, slip one, and we're going to purl the next stitch. Just drape the yarn on top and purl that second stitch. Now slip one with a yarn over and purl one. Slip one with a yarn over. Three times. Purl one, slip one with a yarn over. Then purl one, slip one with yarn in front. Leave that yarn in front as you slip the last stitch purlwise. Turn to work set up row two, wrong side. Set up row two, wrong side using main color. Knit one, slip one with the yarn over. Whenever you slip one in brioche, the yarn needs to be in front as you slip. And then brioche purl one. So the yarn comes all the way around to brioche purl one. Slip one with a yarn over. Brioche purl. Slip one with a yarn over. Brioche purl. Slip one with a yarn over and slip that last stitch with yarn in front. Slide all the stitches to work set up row two with contrast color. Using contrast color, slip one, brioche knit one, slip one yarn over three times. Brioche knit one, slip this stitch with a yarn over. The yarn needs to be in front before you slip. And then the yarn goes on top of the needle to brioche knit one. Slip this stitch with a yarn over. Brioche knit one. Slip one. Here's the little yarn over. The yarn over just happens as you knit, brioche knit that next stitch. And slip that last stitch with yarn in back. So you just finished knitting with your contrast color, leave it in back. Turn to work set up row three, right side. Using main color, Knit one, slip one with a yarn over. The yarn is in front as you slip. Brioche knit one, slip one yarn over three times. Slip, brioche knit, slip, brioche knit, slip. The yarn is in front as you slip. And we're going to slip this last stitch with yarn in front. We need to bring the yarn all the way around in front to make sure that our contrast color stitch has a yarn over shawl on it. 
So there's that last slip stitch with the little yarn over shawl. Slip that last stitch with yarn in front. Slide the stitches. Set up row three right side using contrast color. Slip one. Brioche purl one, slip one yarn over three times. Brioche purl one. Slip one with a yarn over. Brioche purl. Slip. Brioche purl. Slip with that yarn over shawl. Brioche purl. And slip that last stitch with yarn in front. Turn to work set up row four, wrong side. Using main color, knit one, slip one with a yarn over. The yarn needs to be in front before you slip. Bring it around to brioche purl. Slip one with a yarn over, brioche purl. Slip with a yarn over, brioche purl. Slip with a yarn over and slip that last stitch with yarn in front. Slide the stitches to work set up row four, wrong side using contrast color. Slip one, brioche knit one, slip one with a yarn over. Yarn needs to be in front before you slip. And as you brioche knit, Look at that little yarn over shawl. Slip one with a yarn over. Brioche knit. Slip one with that yarn over. Brioche knit one. And slip that last stitch with the yarn in back. For the flying foxtail shawl, it says repeat rows three and four with main color and contrast color twice more. So you're going to work some repeats of those rows that you just knit. If you're following a pattern, do exactly the number of repeats that it says in the pattern. Some of my tabs are a little shorter and some a little bit longer. But row three, right side, knit one, slip one with a yarn over, brioche knit, and keep following your pattern and row repeats for your setup rows. Once you've repeated your setup rows, it should look something like this. Now I'm going to work the right side. Row one, I'm gonna work a new row one with main color. We're going to work the stitches and then pick up stitches along the selvage and cast on edge. So using main color, knit one, slip one with a yarn over, Brioche knit one, slip one yarn over three times. For the flying foxtail shawl, I place a stitch marker. So some patterns place markers, some don't. So follow the pattern as you do this tab. I'm gonna knit this last stitch so for the pickup, whenever the pattern says to pick up stitches along the selvage, it's right here. So for flying foxtail shawl, it says to pick up five stitches. Dive in to pick up and knit one, two, three, four, and five. And for the flying foxtail shawl, it says to pick up one more stitch in the corner. So pick up and knit as many stitches as the pattern says. Sometimes it's three, sometimes it's five. I just did five and then I picked up an extra stitch for the flying foxtail shawl. 
So now when the pattern says to pick up and knit stitches along the cast on edge, that happens right here. This can get a little tight because we have so many stitches on the needle now. So what I like to do is take my needle and pull it through so we have the flexible cord and now it's easier to pick stitches up here. Pick up and knit eight stitches along the cast on edge. One, two, three. Whenever I pick up a stitch into a knit column, I like to dive into the middle of that stitch and pull it through. And that's going to look really nice. Dive into the middle of the knit stitch when you reach those. Okay, I'm going for eight total stitches. Whenever you pick up the last stitch, you can just go through one leg of that selvage and you should have eight stitches for the flying foxtail shawl. And again, it depends on the pattern. Sometimes it might say to pick up nine, or it might say to pick up 11, but that's how you pick up stitches along the cast on edge. Once you do that, you can slide all the stitches to work the contrast color. We're going to slip and purl, brioche purl, with the contrast color all the way across the row. And again, if it feels too tight, to work with all those stitches on the needle, you can poke the cord through and that's going to make it more flexible to work those first couple rows. Once you repeat the right side and the wrong side rows for your shawl pattern, it's going to become uh, more easy to knit because the stitches increase and eventually all your stitches can bunch up on the needle just like this. So do that little magic loop trick if it's more comfortable for you. But once you have your stitches picked up, that is the hardest part of the whole shawl, I think. So give it a couple practice rounds with some scrap yarn and then cast on for your shawl. And pretty soon you'll be off to knit the rest of your shawl. Well, that's all there is to it. That little tab is the top beginning of the shawl. And then you just get to enjoy beautiful brioche ribbing for the rest of the pattern. If you don't get that little tab perfect the first time, don't worry. That means you're human and you're normal, okay? It's totally fine to rip back and try it again. You might want to even practice that brioche tab with this video using a DK weight yarn or a thicker worsted weight yarn, just so you can see what's happening with the stitches. But practice it a few times and I promise you'll get it eventually, okay? And what you just did is the hardest part of the shawl. Everything else is going to be much easier, I promise. So I can't wait to see what you make with those brioche tabs. And please share your progress on Instagram and on Ravelry, because I love seeing what color combos you come up with. I'll see you in the next video.